Describe a book that you enjoyed reading. You should say what the title is, what it is about, why you read it, and explain what effect the book had on you. I am fond of reading selected works of Jack London. It is a collection of the writer's works, including three novels and forty short stories. It is mostly about different characters in the Klondike region of Alaska during the gold rush, but also tells about people's struggles in different situations. I was given the book as a present, and I was immediately fascinated by the raw, beautiful but very real world the writer experienced and wrote about. One story in particular, *The Sea Wolf*, is about a man who was born into a comfortable life. And is suddenly thrust into a dangerous, harsh, and pitiless environment aboard a seal hunting ship, under a cruel, despotic yet charismatic and intriguing captain. He is faced with a moral dilemma: whether he should fight to survive without regard for others, or hold on to values he grew up with in easy circumstances, such as altruism and self-sacrifice. In the end, he finds strength to stand against the merciless captain. When I first read the book, I was most impressed with the exciting action and imagery in the stories. But as I grew older and read them again, the most striking features to me were instead the deeper qualities of character, hard to find and to define. It caused me to look further into people, both in books and in real life. For the qualities that made them truly interesting and enduring. And here we go with part two: books. Describe a book you enjoyed reading. Describe a book that you enjoyed reading. You should say what the title is, what it is about, why you read it, and explain what effect the book had on you. I am fond of reading selected works of Jack London. The selected works—that's <laughs> a pretty good、uh, phrase to use. If it's like a collection of short stories. Jack London. It is a collection of the writer's works, including three novels and forty short stories. It is mostly about different characters in the Klondike region of Alaska during the gold rush. Okay, so she doesn't explain the region. She doesn't explain Gold Rush, because the examiner knows what these things are. So if you mention things, you don't need to explain that much, especially like Gold Rush. <laughs> There's no need to explain the terms that you are using unless you are talking about very specific things that are、uh, pertinent to your personal life. Your personal life. Go ahead and explain, but you don't need to explain general terms to the examiner. But also tells about people's struggles in different situations. I was given the book as a present. Passive voice. I was given the book as a present. And I was immediately fascinated by the raw, beautiful, but very real world the writer experienced and wrote about. Okay, so we've got some intonation. We've got some chunking. She pauses between these adjectives: raw, beautiful, but very real. I think she also stressed very. Just one thing:、uh, the rhythm. She says and wrote about instead of saying and wrote about. That could be improved, but I guess she's trying to do it so the people who listen to her can clearly hear what she's saying. But that's not actually how people talk. One story in particular, *The Sea Wolf*, is about a man who was born into a comfortable life. That's such a good phrase to use, like into a comfortable life. And is suddenly thrust into a dangerous, harsh, and <laughs> pitiless environment. These people always like to use three adjectives: dangerous, harsh, and pitiless environment. <laughs> I think we're going to see more examples of that. Aboard a seal hunting ship. Under a cruel, despotic yet charismatic <laughs> and intriguing captain. No, she went one better. She <laughs> she threw in four adjectives: cruel, despotic, charismatic, intriguing. Now, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, the prompt does say describe, right? 
and one of the best ways that you can describe things is by using adjectives <clears throat> so you can't really fault her for this but that's a lot of adjectives he is faced with a moral dilemma whether he should fight to survive without regard for others or hold on to values he grew up with in easy circumstances such as altruism and self-sacrifice all right so obviously in the real test you're probably not going to know uh, this much vocabulary directly related to the story that you're talking about that's not necessary you don't need to use because I mean this is prepared this is not off the cuff like you are going to do so don't feel intimidated by the words that she's using because it's not very realistic in the end he finds strength to stand against the merciless captain merciless captain bit of stress there when I first read the book, I was most impressed with the exciting action and imagery in the stories. Okay, imagery, that's a good... You can use that word in pretty much anything you say about books, right? Or stories, imagery. But as I grew older and read them again, the most striking features to me were instead the deeper qualities of character hard to find and to define. Not sure what she means by that. It caused me to look further into people, both in books and in real life, for the qualities that made them truly interesting and enduring. All right. So again, there's some reflection here at the end, because as always in part two, at the end, you're asked to reflect on whatever the topic is you're talking about. And she did this very well, although there was just one thing I didn't quite understand. This thing, the deeper qualities of character, hard to find and to define. Uh, but hey, it's still vocabulary, very good. Just the way she talked, not very natural, but you can say that about most of these examples. But there's some good language here that you can maybe use as examples when you do your talk on a book. <laughs> 